All right, guys, on this date in 1993, Sean Bradley was taken number two overall in the draft by the Sixers. He was dunked on after that more than any other player ever. I mean, probably. We don't keep these stats. But look, here he is dunking on Tony Kukoc. We wanted to give him some love before running back the top five best ever dunks on Sean Bradley. Check it out. 835 to go on this one. Robert back with another. Oh, my goodness. What a game he's having. The guy was sitting down for about four or five games. He's come back with a vengeance over the last two. In the average. Bowie out in front. Down the middle goes Jones. Oh, another slab dunk over Bradley. The place is going crazy. He lifted like a helicopter. And he came down like a snowflake. Look in front of the Laker bench. Get a picture of the bench. Get a picture of the bench. There they are. AB brings it up. Stutter step finds the big fella. Bradley could not stop it. Well, that's one of those dunks that you worry about. Kid break as yeah, hard. You better get out of the way. And Bradley. He's a, he's a smart player. Mavericks are right back in it, down by only two. Nice comeback by Dallas. Oh, man, Kevin Garnett <laughs> with a major league dunk. <laughs> major league? What's the next step? What's about it's major league? High as it gets. 14th in points allowed, 8th in field goal defense, and that says a lot. Here comes McCready. Oh, he just shook the gravity right out of the building. What a play by T-Man. How about the passion? Look at the animation on Tracy McGrady. Normally sleepy-eyed, very, you know, very smooth. You don't see this kind of energy and passion. You know, I mean, there you go. Bradley listed at seven feet, six inches tall. Luckily for us, we have someone on our set who once dunked on Sean Bradley. Paul, what was it like to dunk on someone so tall? Listen, I got to constantly remind this new generation, I had bounce. <laughs> so Sean Bradley was the tallest guy in the NBA. <laughs> I was consistently dunking on centers. You know, people remember the 2008 and beyond Paul Pierce, but I really had an athletic game before then. So, you know, I'm glad that we're able to bring this back just to show this new generation. I was, I was dunking on these big centers back then. See, Brian, I've been feeling guilty all day about showing this clip reel in honor of Sean being drafted to number two overall. And, and Paul's making me feel better. It's really in honor of Paul. I got some posters out hey, there. Hey, listen, you just gotta look uh, them up. Paul Pierce could ball. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Brian, I want to move on to you because you wrote a piece recapping a crazy three days in July of 2010 that led to the formation of the Heatles. You mentioned that this union almost happened in Chicago, not Miami. How close were we really were to that? Can you believe it was 10 years ago, basically this week, that this all went down um, this month or, you know, coming up? It's crazy. Um, so when I went back and looked at this, I, I really didn't completely comprehend. It's been, it's been talked about in bits and pieces over the last decade, but I didn't comprehend really how close this was to maybe going to Chicago. And the key was that the Heat had prepared to open up three spots. That was revolutionary. Now we see big threes all over the place, but back then, the idea to sign all three of these guys was not what anybody was thinking, and the Bulls weren't thinking that. They were thinking two. But can you imagine if they had been able to do this, what their their uh, starting lineup would have been? They, Dwayne Wade came to them and asked them, hey, can you open up a third spot? And they tried. They tried to trade Luol Deng. And if they'd been able to pull it off, it would have been Derrick Rose at point guard, Dwayne Wade at shooting guard, LeBron James at small forward, Chris Bosh at power forward, and Joe Kim Noah at center. Oh, wow. That Bulls team, with just two of those five guys, won 60 games the next year anyway. The Heat went to the finals, obviously, the next four years. They weren't able to open the spot. And, oh. they, and they, you know, at the end of the day, three was greater than two. But what a near miss for Chicago. We'll never know how close it actually was. <laughs> wow. Let me tell you something. If they were able to pull that off, I think I just would have retired. You're talking <laughs> about a young Derrick Rose, MVP with LeBron James, D. Wade, and Chris Bosh. They would, that would have been the dynasty. They would, they'd be still talking about they, this, That team would be still playing today. I mean, come on now. That, that wouldn't have been <laughs> fair. I mean, they would have had to rewrite league rules. Collective bargaining agreement would have to change. I, I couldn't even imagine a team with Derrick Rose, D-Way, LeBron. They already Bosch. did that, Paul. They did oh rewrite the rules I'm when the Heat so, did it. It happened anyway. 
<laughs> oh my god it happened anyway right but that then they had to rewrite too. them again after <laughs> kevin durant went to the warriors and creating all the supermax and all the stuff and you know what all the lesson is you can't stop these guys if they want to play together paul i think about all those great heat celtic moments that we got in the ensuing years so i'm glad you didn't mm. retire uh, i am sorry for all of the chicago bulls wow. fans out there who had to just hear brian talk for five Ooh. minutes about what they never got to have Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.